The 2014 National Native Media Conference is just around the corner. Whether you are a seasoned journalist, broadcaster, or just someone looking for new ways to improve your social media presence, the National Native Media Conference has something for you. My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of the Center for Training and Career, CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. <laughs> lunch arc, lunch arc, lunch, lunch arc. arc. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Native Voice TV. We're just having fun. My name's Sundas <laughs> Martinez. And I'm C. Wapili Rose Amador. Lunch arc, lunch arc. And together we are Native Voice TV. We are the indigenous people. And, and we're you're, also crazy. Yeah, and you're probably wondering why we're doing this. So, so what Pili is going to explain. I am. <laughs> Good well, last week life. we had a great artist with us, Lorenzo, <laughs> and welcome back, Lorenzo. We're playing with uh, some of your artwork here. Manchark. <laughs> Thank you for bringing oh, me back. <laughs> I think the last time I was here, we uh, briefly talked about my film work and that educational series that I'm uh, promoting. Uh, and we talked a little bit about my that you My are multi-talented, you're mm. a, a visual, literary, performing artist. Yeah, you remember, I'm and glad you remember. Yes, and I hope our audience it's does too. It's been a whole too. week, I can't yes. believe it, she, she remembered that. You know, my medicine's working. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't forget to take it. And these sharks, they are beautiful. I love these little sharks, that shark, that shark. You know what they remind me of? Tell me. <laughs> the San Jose sharks. I mean, this is Shark Town, right? Yeah. The shark, shark Town? Shark, shark Town, that's, yeah, that's our, yeah. What shark are they, town. basketball, what do they do? They, uh, <laughs> hockey. <laughs> hockey. Oh, hockey? Yeah, yeah. hockey. Yeah, well, San Jose Sharks. I live up in the, the mountains. I don't get out much. Well, thank uh, you for bringing the sharks. Tell us about them. Well, last time I think I talked, the, uh, talked about the multi-disciplines that I work in. Um, I do sculpture in stone, uh, granite, uh, big bronzes, and so on. For people who don't know artists, uh, sometimes an artist will get on a theme, uh, maybe a color. Like um, back in the 70s, uh, for about two years, I used a combination of yellow and purple in all the paintings that I did. I just had to get it out of my system. And uh, this came about mm, because, uh, well, some time ago, I was invited to Hawaii and I ended up in uh, Maui, and uh, I surf. Mm, and I was afraid of uh, great whites. And the kids said, no great whites. I said, okay, no sharks, no tiger sharks, uh -huh. tiger sharks. <laughs> so this, this idea kept coming to me, and I thought, well, what if, what if you see just the fin on the sidewalk? Or what if you see it in your garden? Or where do you see it next to your swimming pool? So I developed these that are poured concrete. Um, I made a mold. And uh, several people have bought these for their gardens. I eventually want to do one out of bronze that's like maybe 10 feet high. Wow. Uh, I just haven't gotten there yet. Um, that one, this one's a, like a beach toy. Uh, I like this. It, um, I have a version of it that you can actually throw in your pool and it'll float up. Oh, cute. And the one you're holding. How about this one? That one uh, is made out of um, ash, a hardwood. 
I sculpted that one. I actually had one of those that I made the mold for making this one, the plastic ones. Mm -hmm. That one I present to my attorney friends. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is that symbolic of? Well, see, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know, but I, Carlo, this friend of mine, um, we're, we meet every Friday and we discuss politics and um, other topics. Yeah. And uh, I said, hey, you've helped me out in the past. And I've got a piece to give you. And I just put it in, in front of him. And he starts laughing. And he says, he says, how did you know? I said, know what? I said, it's just my sculpture, my idea. He says, that's what they call us. I said, what, shark? I didn't know. So that's uh, the version for attorneys, my attorney friends. Well, I think this would go perfect in front of the uh, shark tank in San Jose. We need to talk to our... Uh, Elected you, officials, huh? You know, you know what this would be good too is to put them in like a fish tank, you know, just on the bottom. Oh, that'd be cool too. Just sit yeah. there on the bottom or whatever, Scare or something like fish. that would be cool. Well, you I could paint it or whatever. I did that. Uh, I've got photographs. Yeah. Like I said, it's a theme, and it just yeah. doesn't end, doesn't end. I have a fish bowl with that one in the middle of it. Yeah. See, these would be cool too. Is this one here is it's pretty lightweight. What you can do for all the artist friends and the audience is they can paint. A shark on the wall and where the fin goes they can put this <laughs> sticking out so you see the shark huh? with 3D. this the 3d Good and idea. then you can use it for a, a jacket <laughs> yeah i'm serious <laughs> you know there's just so many different things you can do okay, well, yeah, yeah, that's that's a, so you do have attorney <laughs> friends right that's so they can't, you can't steal one. your ideas <laughs> that's a good one that's a good that one that is good, good. One. i like I'll the business card one too <laughs> those, are, those are really cute yeah. though but uh, very talented, and just for our audience sake, I want to mention that you do have a series of uh, native educational films yeah. that you put together. If you quickly tell us about that, even though we did talk about it last week. Well, I appreciate uh, you running the series for me. Uh, I take you on an, I take you on a 30 minute tour of a native event somewhere on the continent, all the way from uh, Tierra del Fuego down south to um, Bering Straits. And basically, <coughs> it's an event, a native event, that you may not even know about. And if you knew about it, you might not be allowed to attend. But because I'm a, an artist, I show at these events, I dance, I perform, mm -hmm. I MC at powwows. Everyone is my friend, it's my extended community. So I'm able to come in and interview people and uh, uh, teach the audience uh, details about contemporary Native culture. It's called uh, Native America. That's great. Mm -hmm. No, I'm planning on going to the Santa Fe Indian Market Days. I've never been before, so I'm going to watch your, um, your tape or your show and uh, get a little preview so I know what to expect. When are you going? In August. Yeah, it's, it's the August. third weekend, I mm -hmm. think, in August. Mm -hmm. I invite everyone to attend. If you want to see the best Indian art in the world, if you so. want to meet the artists, they uh, will gather there. Uh, what happens in this, like, uh, center of town around the plaza, it's, it becomes uh, a display of art from sculpture to paintings to uh, lithographs, any kind of pottery, any kind of art you can imagine will be there. And, and that's, that's what I wanted to do is, in this episode, it would, hopefully, you will get the sense that you have been there. Mm -hmm. And uh, after you see it, uh, you'll know where to go and uh, you'll, you'll know some of the people already say, hey, I saw I you saw on Lorenzo's you. <laughs> DVD. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Yeah. I'm looking forward to going. Yeah, what's so good about the, those, I, I call them educational tapes, is yeah. because of, um, it allows the people to see the other part, the, the, the other aspect, the other Indians, you know, because we, we're so stereotyped with this one type of Indian on TV and everyone mm -hmm. expects you to look a certain way. Well, you're not Indian, you don't look like the guy on TV. But it's so nice to see all the different types of Indians. Yeah. Well, that, that I hope to capture, and uh, I think I mentioned... Uh, before that I'm, I'm looking for funding, but I, I've got, I've applied to National Geo Geographic and other places for funding because it can be endless. Oh yeah. I mean, if I just follow the powwow trail, mm -hmm. it begins in the spring and there's like, just in California, there's like three, four, five powwows 
at the same weekend. Mm -hmm. And I want to explore uh, corn dances uh, back in the South. Um, I got invited last year. I get these invitations, but I just can't afford to do them right now to see those, uh, uh, those dancers down in, uh, in Mexico. I, I don't know the tribe, but I've got a personal invitation. They're called um, boladores, boladores, mm -hmm. and, and um, it means flyers. Uh -huh. So these guys, it, uh, they, yeah. s they sit up on Poles. this like pole, like, yeah. I don't know, 50 feet or something, and they just toss themselves back. They get, they're tied at the ankle, yeah. and they just kind of unravel like the flagpole. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> oh, by the way, the episode in, that I shot in um, Albuquerque for, at the Pueblo Culture Center, if you see that episode in the middle of the plaza, mm -hmm. there is a pole. It's like a big telephone pole with yeah. nothing there. Every summer they bring those dancers. Really? Yeah. Wow. wow, that would be something to see. Yeah. I think they had something like that in San Jose years ago. I can't remember what year, but I think it, they had something like that and I yeah, missed probably. it and I was like, oh, I'm kicking myself for it, yeah. missing it. Mm. Well. You, we were talking about the sharks, and you were talking about you like to surf. You have a song that you wrote about uh, when you were Maui? Well, called Honey Girl. Actually, uh, I, <laughs> I, I was, I had kind of a business surfing trip to go to Maui, went uh -huh. to Hana, and um, I was invited to perform in the schools there. And, and the coolest thing about uh, those islands is I, uh, okay, other extended cousins, uh, and I, I, they look like me, I look like them. And we all had this nice tan all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and the children all referred to me as uncle. Oh, yeah. Okay? Uh, that's just the way it is, the relationship. Mm, and I did know that this particular, there's a word in this song, it's actually the title. Um, the title of the song is Honey Girl. Well, I didn't know when I started doing this song for the kids, all the little girls just lit up. Well, I didn't know that that's what they call their daughters, their nieces, honey girl. Uh -huh. Ah. That's so, voted for that. <clears throat> so this song that was actually written here on the mainland was perfect for them there. And I was able to teach it to all of them. And it starts out with some vocables. Sometimes I'll do it occasionally for a big audience where there's a lot of women. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> well, I dedicate it to every one of them. Oh. So if there's an audience listening that's of the female gender, this is especially for you. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey. Now those are just vocables that don't mean anything, so I decided to attach some words to it, kind of like Northern style. In English. I sure miss my honey girl. I sure miss my honey girl. Wish I could be with her. Wish she could be with me. Guess I'll go to San Jose, see my honey girl. <laughs> I sure miss my honey girl. I sure miss. 
kiss my honey girl wish i could be with her wish she could be with me guess i'll go to maui see my honey Great. I think so. after this show, we're going to have a bunch of honey girls out there waiting for them. Fan club, huh? <laughs> adventure, adventure. Okay. <laughs> I love the sharks. Yeah. So, let's see, we, we've <clears throat> talked about some of the acting you've done. You've, you're a filmmaker. You're, you've made beautiful pictures and sculptures. You, and doing, like, you, too, you have a CD out, too. I have a CD. It's called New Warrior. In fact, I'm going to re release it. Uh, in August, there's a reception I'm doing down south. I already see that, released that one. Um, I've been published. I've, I've got s poetry. Poetry, you have um, to do poetry. In fact, I've got one for you. Do you? Okay. Oh, I was at an event uh, in San Francisco uh, recently, and uh, it, you know we were discussing film work. The first film I worked on was a Disney film. And of course, uh, guess what part I got? Uh, <laughs> yes, horse? yes. Were you on a horse? <laughs> yeah, I was on a horse. I had to play Indian on a horse. And there was this conflict between uh, these other extras and, and myself. Mm -hmm. Well, there was only me and Tony were the only Indians on the set. And, uh, you know, in border towns, in rural areas, there's a lot of racism that we got to deal with. Mm -hmm. Just ignorance, right? Just yeah. Ignorant people. You know, this is all they see. And Tony was mad. Tony was mad. He wanted to fight. I said, no, 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 no. I said, well, but I was mad too. I said, we handled it a different way. Next day, we're standing in line, getting our makeup and our hair and everything. And the guys had wigs, so they were complaining about getting pinched and stuff. <laughs> and the girls were just brushing our hair, real happy we had natural hair. Mm, and I told one of the guys, he was behind, you know, he was doing the, getting his makeup, and he had made these comments about our hair and blank, blank, blank hair, you, this, that. So this is, what I, this is what came out of it. On the length of my hair, all I know is if you keep your hair long, your neck will never get red. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a small sampling of how I tried to uh, answer political issues mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in a subtle way with humor yeah. without having to smack somebody with a bat. Yeah, but it's so much now. <laughs> it feels much better. It feels much better. <laughs> yeah, don't do that, audience. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. Yeah. I don't do that. Yeah. Now, you, do you have some other poetry you'd like to do for us? You mentioned a song that you sing for women, too. Mm, yes, but I can't do that on live television. Ooh. I do have a poem. We go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's good uh, yeah, I've got, I've got all kinds of poetry, all kinds of poetry. Uh, this is a little abstract, but uh, so I'll have to do it twice. So you have to kind of visualize, and that's what okay. poetry does. Mm -hmm. With letters and words, we create images that make you uh, see what we're trying to create instead of paints and colors. Here goes. From the quiet stream, I scoop the moon into my hand to see just how it tasted. For those of you out there that didn't get it. From the quiet stream, I scoop the moon into my hand yeah. to see just how it tasted. Kind of the reflection under the water, right? In there you go. There yeah. you go. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a nice way of things. Talking, you could actually talk that way too. I mean, so long as everyone knows the analogy and stuff like that. Well, one of the things about, I think, a lot of Native people historically, once we learn the language mm -hmm. of Eng English, we, I can't even say that word, English. <laughs> uh, we had to translate, and I really think that there's something that happens in the native mind that is different from mm, Euro-American thinking. Yeah. It's more spatial. Yeah. So we, we have to mm, describe it our own way. And when it comes out, people say, whoa, that's very poetic. That's, that's sheer poetry. Yeah. Well, that's how it, it comes out. Yeah, because you could use that as an example. You know, like I'll meet you 
when I could drink the, the moon from the river, you know. And that's how a lot of the native people thought and would, would, would think, would visualize things as pictures to describe things. But then when you try to translate it to English, then you start thinking a different way and you start doing things a different way. I teach uh, children. Yeah. I've uh, worked in the prisons in CYA and I've made poets out of everyone. In fact, if you take my workshop, I present a card, mm -hmm. uh, make you a card carrying poet. Oh, I sign it, I sign it. And uh, this actually happened when I was uh, teaching up in a Foothill school. My eighth graders, eighth graders are sharp. Um, there was something going on in his next class and the kid just stood up and recited this poem. And the English teacher says, what are you doing? Says, my poetry. <laughs> English teacher, right, yeah. says, that's not a poem, it's a poem. Looked around to the other students that had been in the class, it's a poem, they say it's a poem. Yeah. He said, oh, I'm you have one of these? <laughs> you have one of these? So, and, and I tell my students, um, I will make you a poet. Well, I think we are all poets, we just need to be able to express it. There's this um, form that I've developed that, if you're familiar with poetry, there's a Japanese uh, form that is called haiku. haiku. The English translations of that are quite beautiful, like mm -hmm. uh, mm, 17 syllables. My version of that is called upatani, which is a uh, Kirishian from Laguna, a, a, the word that actually means little story. It's four syllables. Mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, my uncles, I wanted to explore this whole thing and I found out there is no word for poetry mm -hmm. in any of the native languages that I know. There's no separation. Yeah. It just comes out yeah. and it's poetry. So mm, this particular piece, four syllables, upa uh, tani, just like little poem, uh, four lines, each line has four syllables and um, mm, I choose a different theme every time. Mm -hmm. But I've created, uh, I'd say, hundreds of poets are out there. Okay, well, <laughs> certified by you. Yes. With and I've told them, any problem, give them my phone number. I got my MA, UCLA. Yeah. You want to argue about it? That's right. <laughs> Before, we only have a few minutes left. But if you could tell us a little bit about your people. Well, I'm uh, on my I like to let people know that I'm muscular Apache uh, on my dad's side. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have relatives that came from Spain. On my mother's side, I'm like three different, four different tribes, Pueblo tribes, uh, Santa Clara, San Juan, uh, Cochiti. Um, that's where I come from. So, so just for the audience, if they don't know where Muscular Apaches reside at, where's the reservation? Oh. There happens to be a reservation mm -hmm. in uh, New Mexico, southern New Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, about 80 miles uh, west of Roswell. Oh, Roswell. <laughs> I went to grade school in Roswell, and I happened to have been born the same year that the ship crashed. Did you? S <laughs> uh, so I don't know if that's where I get my talent or my mm -hmm. auras or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's where that particular tribe. The Pueblo tribes are all around um, Albuquerque and Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you go to in and Market, uh, you'll run across, they call them Pueblos because of Spanish, that's what they call them. Yeah. They're all just separate villages with separate languages. Mm -hmm. And you can have one uh, village next to the other, totally different language. Could be Tiwa, could be Tewa. Yeah. yeah. That's fascinating. So if, if, do we have time? Yeah. So if, if you had a message to all the different nations out throughout the United States uh, and, and south, <coughs> and, you know, from, from the tip of Alaska all the way down to Chile, what message would you give? Join everyone? my organization. I am the founder of, are you ready for this? Yeah. This is the first time I'm, I'm announcing it publicly. I've got the logo. I'm looking for uh, a nonprofit status. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, UNA, United Natives of the Americas. Mm. I think that's what has to happen. Yeah. We forget about these borders. Yeah. 
people have brought up these issues with me and I say, hey, before Europeans came, all the way, my people were traveling up yeah. and down, up and down. You build a fence, uh, another 200 years, that fence is not going to be there. And, and some other people are not going to be here anymore. Yeah. So the key word is unite. 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 Absolutely. All nations unite. And, and, I, and I want to tell any people, support each other. Exactly. You have an artist, support him. This station, support this station. Anything you can do to be part of it, be part of it. Yeah. Uh, Non-Indians need to know uh, what our culture is, what our talents are, what our expertise is in, in everything, the sciences, uh, everything. Yeah. Absolutely. That's I like great, that message uh, that's because that's the message. same one that we have. Yeah. You know, we have to support each other and unite as people. Yeah, definitely. That's what we've been talking and talking and talking. Yes. <laughs> well, that's why I'm here. Yeah. I mean, I, I met you at the DQ Powwow and you invited me. I was honored uh, to be invited. And we're going to have you back. Uh, I'll be because back. Because you have a lot more to share with us oh, and we're definitely going to bring some of your, um, your shows artists, on yeah. here and educate the public because you have a lot to offer. Well, yeah. I, I appreciate this opportunity. This uh, community wouldn't uh, uh, enjoy any of this if you hadn't put so much time and effort into it. Well, you know, we have very little voice, very yeah. little voice on screen, on in television, and whatever we can get out there with uh, yeah. um, Indian Time Radio yeah, and our show exactly. and you know, the, the work you produce, it all helps. Here's it some percentages helps. you probably never heard before. SAG Screen Actors Guild gave a uh, did a survey uh, f uh, six years ago, five years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Who gets the parts? White folks get like eighty five percent. Yeah, it goes down forty or whatever. Oh, Natives, yeah. we were getting two wow. percent. Six. You know what we're getting now? One percent of the parts. Thank you so much for being with we us again, it. and uh, we will see you soon. Thanks for joining us. Good night. July 10th through the 13th, 2014 at the Hyatt Regency, Santa Clara, California. Registration is available on the website of Native Public Media, the Native American Journalists Association, and Vision Maker Media. Call 405-325-1649 for details.